Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the 2022 American Diabetes Association Living with Diabetes Ask the Expert series. Today's topic is neuropathy and peripheral artery disease, minimizing the risk of amputations. My name is Carla Cox, registered dietitian nutritionist and certified diabetes care and education specialist and your host for today's program. Our Ask the Experts series is all about answering questions from our listeners. So start getting your questions ready. Dr. Rust? Hi, I'm Tim Rust. I'm a neurologist uh, here in Columbus, Ohio, and I special, specialize in muscle and nerve disorders or neuromuscular medicine. And so I see a lot of patients with peripheral neuropathy and diabetes is the most common cause of peripheral neuropathy. So I see a lot of patients with diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be part of this call today, and I'm excited to get to answer some of your questions. Thank you. As we are waiting for our callers and online listeners to chime in, I'm going to go ahead and kick off with the first question. What are some of the nerve problems that are often seen in persons with diabetes? I understand it's around 50%. So the term neuropathy is very general. And so when we talk about diabetic neuropathy or neuropathy in, in diabetes, we're talking about what we call length dependent peripheral neuropathy, which means it's nerve problems outside of the brain and spinal cord. And it's the longest nerves that are generally affected first. So patients often start to get symptoms down in their toes and feet where the longest nerves are located. And the common symptoms with that would be numbness, tingling, trouble feeling in your feet. Patients also will often get some pain in those areas and common types of nerve pain are burning pain or, or tingling pain, or a lot of patients describe a painful cold sensation. So that's sort of the, the most common type of nerve problem associated with diabetes. But diabetes is very tricky and it can cause a lot of other different types of nerve problems that are more rare. Sometimes diabetes can just affect one nerve instead of affecting all the nerves. Um, sometimes diabetes can actually affect the nerve roots coming out of the lower back rather than the longest nerves. So there are a lot of different things and a lot of different ways that diabetes can affect the nerves. Thank you. If you're just joining us, welcome to today's Ask the Experts Q&A, Neurology and Peripheral Artery Disease, Minimizing the Risk of Amputation. As a reminder, for those of you on the phone, press star three on your keypad and an operator will collect your question and place you in a queue so that you may have the opportunity to ask your question live. To participate online, type in your name and question in the fields below the screening player, press the submit question button, and your question will come directly to us. Remember today's topic is neuropathy, nerve issues. Let's remember to focus on that topic for today's event. Okay, so let's now take the first um, call in. So this will be Cheryl. Cheryl from Wisconsin, you're on the line. Yes, uh, Cheryl Ann Reifenberg, uh, calling from Boyceville, Wisconsin. I've had uh, diabetes 2 for over um, 10 years. It's been uh, almost uh, uh, 20 years, 17 years. And I'm wondering about um, neuropathy. Now, uh, with the ingrown toenails, sores on the feet, calluses, uh, how can you control the AC1 or the blood sugars or the, um, the uh, also the uh, cholesterol? Um, how can you uh, be able to get the proper fitting shoes for your feet that will not uh, be something that's a problem? And I am allergic to many things in materials, so I have to be careful what kind of shoes I do buy at a store. And uh, what are the first signs of neuropathy in a person who has 
type 2 diabetes. Thank you. So th thank you for your questions, Carla. I'll, I'll start with the last thing you said. What are the, the first signs of neuropathy? Um, most of my patients first notice some trouble feeling in their feet or toes. And so they may notice, you know, if they get in a bathtub or shower that the water doesn't feel as cold or as hot as, as they think it should. Um, some patients will describe it feeling like they're walking on a pillow or marshmallows because they've lost that feeling down right in their feet. Other patients feel a, a mild sensation of pressure in their feet too. So th those are a lot of the descriptions I hear. And then pain will be the first symptom for a number of people, and that'll be that burning or tingling pain in the toes or, or the feet. So those are probably the most common things that I, I hear mentioned first. Um, you, you hit on a lot of things earlier in your question, and you I think you had mentioned cholesterol medicine, keeping blood sugar under control, and there, there are a lot of different things in general you can do to help prevent health problems caused by diabetes. And so the number one is trying to keep that blood under a low range. Um, uh, that's the, you know, that's the main thing, the high blood sugar that's going to affect the nerves, going to affect the blood vessels and, and other organs in the body. But as you mentioned with cholesterol, there are other medical problems that often go along with diabetes that can combine to affect blood vessels in the legs, affect nerves in the legs. And so you want to keep make sure you're, you have a good general doctor to help make sure blood pressure is under control, cholesterol. Tobacco smoking is another big risk factor that can make diabetic problems worse. Um, and then exercise is really important. To, it can help control diabetes, but it can also help with the medical problems caused by diabetes too. So it, a really good take home message from today would be try to you know, get up and do something active every day. Um, you don't have to go lift weights or run a marathon, but going for a short walk can be good physical activity. And then avoiding tobacco smoking um, is, is really important for general health, spe specifically when you have diabetes. So we're having a little bit of technical problems right now. We can't hear Dr. Rust. So while we're waiting to get him back, um, let's discuss some uh, prevention of amputations. Um, so, and let me know as soon as he's back on. Um, so the big things are managing your glucose, which you guys all know already. So if you have a sensor, that would be keeping your glucose between 70 and 180 most of the time. If you don't have a sensor, um, then your pre-glucose reading should be under 130, and your two hours after a meal should be under 180. So if you can do that and have an A1C of less than 7%, you are going a long way to helping to prevent amputations. Other things are, as uh, Dr. Russ mentioned, any exercise um, and also um, eating healthfully can make a difference. So lots of fruits and vegetables, um, that's always helpful in all of these things. Um, and then um, also keeping your um, cholesterol readings within a normal range. So there's lots of things you can do to help prevent amputation. I think one of the biggest things, too, is taking your socks and shoes off when you go in to see your physician so that they can check to see, are your feet the right temperature? Um, are you having good sensation? And everyone should be doing that on a regular basis. So when you go to the doctor, I would just go ahead and your, your diabetes specialist or your primary care, just go ahead and take your socks and shoes off and make sure that they're examining your feet to make sure there's nothing there that could cause problems. Okay, um, a second thing, um, are there any restrictions on exercise for persons with neuropathy? And when Dr. Russ comes on, we'll ask him that question again. But one of the things to be aware of is you probably, if you already have neuropathy and it's significant in your feet, it would be better for you to do something like cycling or swimming. Those are much better options 
because they won't cause any impact on your feet. So those are a couple exercises that you can do. Also, you can see a physical therapist and they can design some programs for you that would be appropriate. So that's another thing to think about. And one of the questions, how often should you have your feet checked? Well, you should have them every time you go in. Um, and you should be checking them on your own as well. So if you can't see the bottom of your feet, having a partner or spouse help you with that, or putting a little mirror underneath your foot so that you can actually look back and see any top possible red spots or sores that you have on your feet. Um, if you have any issues, you should be seeing a podiatrist. So that's something that you need to ask for if you're not automatically referred to a podiatrist. And that's really their role. So you see a physician to check on all the things like your cholesterol and your blood glucose and things like that, and you see a podiatrist specifically for your feet if you're having problems with them. So keep that in mind. Another question is, um, is peripheral artery disease related to heart disease? And the answer is yes. And perhaps, hopefully, we'll get Dr. Rust on the line quickly. Um, but um, peripheral artery disease, oh, wonderful. So um, I think we're both on the phone maybe. So we were just, I was going through some of the talking points and um, could you just mention how peripheral artery disease is related to heart disease? So peripheral artery disease talks about uh, problems with the blood vessels down legs. Heart disease is specific to the blood vessels in the heart or the coronary artery. The building draw plaques that block the blood vessels, things that affect blood um, through, through with, with the legs and with heart disease, with the blood vessels, blood flow through the blood vessels of the heart. Okay, thank you. So I have a call coming in from Cheryl Atkins from Alabama. Cheryl, you are on the line. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, can neuropathy cause you to have a loss of balance? Mm. That is one of the main symptoms of neuropathy. Um, one of the the main keep our balance is by feel our feet feeling the ground and our legs feeling where we are in space. And so if if that feeling is affected, it can definitely balance and feel unsteady. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have a question coming in um, from Donald. Donald is from Wichita Falls, Kansas. Donald, you're on the line. Hello. Um, I served in Vietnam. I had neuropathy when I returned home. I have never had blood sugar over eight. Point nine, and doctors refuse to say that it's not diabetic related. Is there any treatment I can use to help me? Also, um, my feet and hands feel like I'm wearing muckluck made out of prickly pear cactus for my feet and hands. Okay. The Thank symptoms, you so much. Symptoms. So, Dr. Russ, of, can you address the issue of um, an A1C of 8.9 and how that might impact neuropathy? I, I can. And so 8.9 is, is actually relatively high for a hemoglobin A1C, um, and so that blood sugar is high. And it, it's interesting, we know that even mild diabetes can have the nerves. You, you don't have to have had you know, moderate or severe diabetes for years. Sometimes it's someone who has new 
nerve problems. Um, and then I think you, you mentioned you, you're feeling that prickling or tingling in your, in your hands and feet, very common in uh, nerve problems from dice. It's often hard to tell exactly what neuropathy in a patient. I think you were alluding to um, some people who are in V were exposed to Agent Orange and, and possibly other substances. Um, and, you know, I think it's possible for things like that to cause nerve problems due to nerve problems due to blood sugar. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry for all the technical difficulties. Usually we don't have those as most of you know. So we'll be calling on um, Bobby Brown in just a minute. And Bobby, why don't you just hold off till Tim says he's on and we'll let you answer your question live. Okay, is that the one from Waco? Yeah, that's the one from Waco. That's you. Okay, so hold I just, on just wanted to make sure. Yeah, Tim. Tim uh, Tim Russ will be on in shortly. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You bet. Thank you so much. And thanks for all your patience, everybody. This is uh, a challenge when we don't have our um, internet working the way it, it should be. But we all know those problems with uh, computers. They're wonderful when they work, right? But not so much otherwise. While we're waiting for him, I will give a little advertisement for the future. Hopefully, we won't have internet problems. Uh, no Diabetes by Heart, our next event will be October 11, Diabetes and the Family Connection. And September 27, we're having a focus on diabetes, working with eye health, uh, ethnic differences, does race matter in diabetic eye disease? So um, September 27, October 11, hopefully you'll be on, and hopefully we won't have any internet problems at that point in time. I'm back. Oh, awesome. Okay, so Bobby's on the line ready to ask a question. Bobby, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, my legs turn uh, black, like big black bruises. Is there anything that I can do for that? Mm. Well, it, it, it's question. important you get into a doctor to have them look at that because it sounds like that could be a number of things. Um, if it's dark bruising, you know, that could be some sort of bleeding or clotting issue. Um, but if you're having more blood vessel problems from diabetes in your feet, that can actually um, that can cause black spots on the skin, and that can be signs of, you know, some, some blockage of the blood vessels. Um, so, you know, depending on exactly what that is, I think there are things that doctors could do, and I, I definitely recommend getting in to see a doctor as soon as you can. Thank you. Great advice. Okay, we have, um, let's see here. Um, we have Jane. Jane's from Georgia. Jane, you're on the line. Yes, hi. Thank you for taking the call. Um, I've been awakened out of sleep with pain in my big toe. It just wakes me up. Um, the other thing, I had a hip replacement done um, and the femoral nerve got compressed, so I have a hard time with that leg. I don't feel anything unless I touch it. And then what's odd is it's numb until I touch it, and then it's painful. So I know that's a nerve business. But it's the pain in the toe that wakes me up, the big toe. And uh, also on my left hand, my ring finger on my left hand, I will get zinging pain in just that one finger. Uh, it it really puzzles me. Uh, my A1Cs are usually very low, uh, 5.4 around there. So um, I feel like um, a type 2 diabetic is uh, controlled that way. But I'm just wondering about that. Can you can you enlighten me on that in some way? Thanks. Sure. Sure. It's hard to give advice to a you know an individual patient without you know taking a detailed history, examining you, and so that you really need to to see a doctor in person to get that detailed history and exam, and they'll be able to help narrow down what can cause pains like that. Sometimes nerve problems can cause you know a, a brief 
random type of pain just in one one finger or toe or one area of the body but you know b blood vessel problems could possibly cause that too and you know sometimes we we have some unexplained aches and pains as well but um, the best way to figure out what that may be is a detailed evaluation by a doctor perfect thank you so much all right, we have a question coming in from Walter, and Walter is from Kism. I know where Kism is, Florida. Walter, you're on the line. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> thank you very much for taking the question. Kissimmee, Florida is right outside of Orlando. Oh, there you go. Thanks. Um, I'm using something called diclofenac sodium on the on my feet. I don't really see much of an improvement. I'm supposed to put it on like four times a day. Um, I'm getting, cramp, um, you know, pain and um, more difficulty in trying to move the feet. And I try to move the toes all day long while I'm sitting. Um, I walk a mile in the morning. I walk a mile at night. Uh, I'm just trying to keep as active as possible. I'm 78 years of age. Uh, I'm in good health. Uh, other than this, uh, with just normal um, problems of no no great, you know, whatever. But I'm just trying to figure out what what I can do to make the feet perform. They are performing now, but they're kind of like on the stiff side and a little bit of pain. Well, I, I love your level of physical activity. That, that's, that exercise is great, and I think it will have many, many health benefits for you in general. Um, the diclofenac, uh, I assume that's a topical treatment you're using on your feet. That, that's a, a treatment that can be used for nerve pain, also can help with arthritis pain, too. Sometimes doctors will prescribe a topical cream or ointment because you can avoid some of the side effects that people get when you take a medicine by mouth. When, when you take a medicine by mouth, it gets into your bloodstream, and so it sort of goes to all the areas of the body, whereas a, a topical cream, you can put it right on the area you have pain, and it sort of treats, keeps treatment localized. Um, in terms of sort of stiffness and trouble moving the toes, you can get some weakness from diabetic nerve problems, it doesn't tend to be a prominent symptom, but a lot of my patients with diabetic nerve problems have trouble spreading their toes. And so you may be noticing a little of that. It's also possible that this could be more of a joint problem with the joints in the toes and the feet, and you might have some arthritis in your feet too. And, and again, a, a detailed evaluation and physical exam by a doctor might be able to help tell what, what's the main cause of these symptoms. Super. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go on to Charlotte. Charlotte is from Chicago. Right, let me get you on the line here. There you are. You're now on the line. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is, does neuropathy always affect both feet, or is it possible to have just one foot affected by it? So most of the time, we expect diabetic nerve problems to be symmetric, meaning it would be both feet or both hands. But diabetes causes all kinds of different nerve problems. And sometimes it can be, you know, just one nerve by itself, or it could be one arm or one leg. Um, so it, when I see someone with nerve problems just in one leg, I look for other causes other than diabetes, but it's still possible that it's diabetes. Interesting. So one of the questions we chatted about a little earlier is, could you clarify the difference between peripheral artery disease, which may lead to amputation, and neuropathy? So, so that's a, a really good point, is that neuropathy or nerve problems are are not what lead patients to have to have amputations sometimes. That's more blood vessel or vascular problems in the, in the legs. And 
so, so diabetes affects the blood vessels and affects flow of blood through the, the blood vessels. And that that's a little different than the nerve problems. Um, with the sort of just talking about symptoms, if it's blood vessel problems from diabetes, that can often cause skin color changes in the feet. Um, patients will notice pain while they're walking that uh, and is relieved when they rest. Um, and then your doctor may notice that there's trouble feeling pulses or trouble feeling the flow of, of blood through the blood vessels in the feet. With the nerve problems, in general, it tends to be more constant pain that's there whether you're active or not. Um, and, and you don't have as much of skin color changes with that. Now, a lot of people will have both blood vessel problems and nerve problems from diabetes, and so it can often be hard to tell exactly what symptoms or problems are, are caused by the blood vessels and are caused by the nerves, and, and that's where, where a doctor can help, help you to figure that out. So a follow-up question on that. So if a person has neuropathy and numbness in their feet, um, so then they could possibly develop some sores from the peripheral artery disease and not know that. Is that true? Yes. So, so when you have trouble feeling your feet, when you have numbness, I recommend that patients Pick one time a day, either you know in the morning when you wake up or at night before you go to bed, and check your feet. You know, lit literally look at your feet and see if there's any raw areas, any any sores, any any uh, uh, abrasions or wounds. So the nerve problems keep you from being able to feel that happening. Um, so someone who can feel their feet normally, like. Let's say you get a stone stuck in your shoe. You're going to feel it. You're going to take your shoe off and shake that stone out. Whereas someone who has numbness in their feet, you might walk around all day with that stone in your shoe, and it might cause a little wound on your foot. And then once you have a wound, then the blood vessel problems come in, and the, you know the wound doesn't get as good of blood flow. It doesn't heal as quickly as it would in someone who does not have diabetes. And you can you can end up with some bad problems with wounds that don't heal, that get infected, and then it can become a very serious medical issue. Great, that's very good. Very good explanation. Thank you so much. So this this question comes in from Herbert from Maryland. Herbert, you're on the line. Yes, my question was, what can we take to curtail the neuropathy? I'll surprise it. So, unfortunately, in most cases, once someone has nerve problems or neuropathy, there's no treatment that makes it better or, or helps it to go away. It's still very important to try to keep your blood sugar under as good of control as possible because that'll help keep the nerve problems from getting worse. We also have some treatments that can help with the symptoms, like if someone's having burning pain in their feet, there are medicines we can use to help decrease or take away that pain. But unfortunately, there's nothing that's proven to, to really bring, bring back the nerve function and nothing that will allow the nerves to completely heal again. Okay. Uh, this question comes in from Gloria, and I don't know where she's from. I don't have that, but Gloria, you're on the line. Thank you. I'm from California. Um, so okay, can I pre-diabetic have neuropathies in their hands? I have uh, tingling sometimes during my sleep at night. Um, mm. My last A1C was borderline okay, and I'm, my glucose was 106, but um, I don't understand why they're tingling in my hands once in a while. It started about six, seven years ago when I was not pre-diabetic. It subsided through the years. 
And when I became pre-diabetic, uh, I was often getting tingling in my hands and, and, us- and always at nighttime when I'm asleep. Could that be from pre-diabetics? So even mild diabetes can cause nerve problems. Um, but so typically it would start to cause nerve problems in the feet before the hands. And it's a little unusual that you're noticing this so prominently at night. Another thing diabetes can do is it can put you at increased risk for pinched nerves in the body. And there are a few areas where nerves are a little exposed and at a high risk for getting pinched. One area is at the wrist, and we call that carpal tunnel syndrome. We think that uh, things like repetitive hand movements, like people who sew a lot or do hair or type a lot or work construction or work in a factory, repetitive hand movement can put you at risk for that too. But I, I think having diabetes also increases that risk. And so I, I wonder if you may have carpal tunnel syndrome um, rather than what we call diabetic neuropathy. So you might want to talk to a doctor about doing some nerve testing on the hands to see about carpal tunnel syndrome. Thank you. We have a question coming in from Pam. Pam is from North Carolina. Pam, you're yes. online. Hello. I think you've already answered my question. I wanted to know if there was anything you could do to reverse the effects or cancel out the neuropathy, and you said no. So Mm -hmm. thank you. Well, I can can follow up a little bit more on that. Um, You you may read, for for those of you who like to Google and read online, um, I think there is a, a... a study that looked at something called alpha lipoic acid, which this one study showed may have had a little bit of benefit for patients with nerve problems or neuropathy. So some nerve specialists will have patients take alpha lipoic acid. Other nerve specialists say the the evidence in the study wasn't very strong and that they don't think it makes a big difference. Um, so that, that's sort of a controversial area, and so that's a, a you know a maybe that alpha lipoic acid helps nerve problems. And then another question I get a lot in the office is, should I be taking vitamin B complex or vitamin B12? Um, a lot of people hear that that can help with nerve problems too. There are several different vitamin deficiencies where if a vitamin level is low, that it can cause neuropathy or nerve problems. But unless your doctor has checked your specific vitamin level, and unless it's actually low, it doesn't help to take more of these vitamins. So if your vitamin B12 level is normal, it doesn't help to take more B12. Now, some people will be diagnosed with a low B12 level, and taking extra B12 can then help nerve problems from getting worse. But, it, but unless your vitamin levels are low, I, I wouldn't spend a lot of money taking extra vitamins. Good. So we have an online question coming in from Chris. What is the most used medication for neuropathy? Um, and are there any medications that are not so sedating? So I, I think I know what Chris is, is talking about. I, I think they're they're asking about medicines for nerve pain, because as we talked about, there's no medicine that's actually going to heal the nerves. Um, There are a few medicines that we very commonly use to treat nerve pain, that burning, tingling, cold-like pain. Gabapentin, I think, is the most common. The brand name is Neurontin for that. And it's a, it's a safe medicine to take. It does not cause a lot of side effects, but it can definitely make people feel drowsy or loopy or sedated. Um, and so I often start that medicine at a very low dose to try and make sure it doesn't cause sedation. Um, and then, you know, your doctor can always increase it later if you're not having side effects but still having pain. There's a very similar medicine to gabapentin called pregabalin, or the brand name is Lyrica. So some patients where gabapentin doesn't work or it causes side effects, 
for some patients, pregabalin will work better. It won't cause side effects or, or they'll, they'll, it'll work better for their nerve pain. So those are two of the ones I start with first. There also are a number of medicines that are in the antidepressant class that also help with pain because they work with certain neurotransmitters or molecules or chemicals in the brain and spinal cord and nerves that are part of the, the pain pathway. There's some very old antidepressants that we call tricyclic antidepressants. Uh, two of the most common ones are amitriptyline or nortriptyline. And these can help with nerve pain, but these tend to be very sedating and cause a lot of drowsiness. So when I prescribe those, I have patients take them at night, and they can also help with sleep because you take them, you get drowsy, it helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. So for my patients that have a lot of nerve pain at night, I'll often use one of those medicines. And then there's some newer antidepressant medicines that specifically work on the, the neurotransmitter norepinephrine, and those can help with nerve pain. Venlafaxine or brand name Effexor is one of those, and then Duloxetine or brand name Cymbalta. And I believe Cymbalta is actually FDA approved for diabetic nerve pain. Um, so those are the most common medicines that I use to treat nerve pain. Um, there, there are a number of other um, seizure medicines that sometimes can help with nerve pain. So if I've tried all the normal medicines, I'll try some other seizure type medicines. Um, but it really is trial and error trying to find medicines that help with nerve pain and, and don't cause untolerable side effects for patients. We had talked about topical treatments like a cream you put on your feet versus taking pills. And, and that's something that's been studied. And a lot of these same medicines like gabapentin or the amitriptyline that you can take by mouth, you can also have made into a cream or an ointment at a compounding pharmacy. And there are good medical studies that show that these can help with nerve pain. The problem is having a medicine made at a compounding pharmacy is often expensive. And so the, the few times I've prescribed these medicines to patients, they've gotten a, a tube of medicine with a few ounces in it, and they tell me it you know, costs a few hundred dollars, and so it can be pretty expensive. And so unless it's you know, the only thing that's taking somebody's pain away, uh, most of my patients don't end up using it just because it is a, a very expensive type of treatment. Thank you. We have a question, a great question coming in from Elizabeth from Richard, Richmond, Virginia. Elizabeth, you're on the line. Yes, hi. Um, I uh, forgot to mention that I'm a type 1 diabetic, and I have been for 44 years. And the mm -hmm. question I have concerns the autonomic nervous system. I've been told that mine is dysfunctional, and I know your topic today is about neuropathy, but does neuropathy have any impact on the autonomic nervous system? And uh, one further question, we've seen a lot of advertisements about the super beets or the beet powder that can help with circulation. Is there any benefit to that? Thank you very much. The, the, the beet powder, I don't know much about that. And, and circulation um, is a little out of my area as a neurologist, so I, I I don't know for sure if that works or not. Um, so, um, oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. So you were, um, what was the first part of the question again? Autonomic neuropathy. Uh, th thank you. I, I knew that was a very good question. <laughs> um, so neuropathy is a very general term, and it just means nerve problem. So autonomic nerve problems definitely fall under the heading of neuropathy. Um, autonomic is a certain type of nerve or nervous system in the body, and it controls things like blood pressure. Um, it can control your stomach and intestines, moving food through your digestive system. Um, it can it also affects things like sweating in your body and your sweat glands. 
And so the these symptoms are often overlooked in neuropathy patients, but it, neuropathy affects all the different types of nerves. And so a, a lot of people with diabetic nerve problems will have stomach problems. The medical term is gastroparesis, where food sits in their stomach and it doesn't get moved through the, the normal way. Um, and, and so the, it, neurologists are involved a little bit with treating this, but of, oftentimes with autonomic symptoms like the stomach symptoms, it'd be best to see a, a stomach specialist, a gastroenterologist, um, for if you're having that specific type of problem. Thank you. We have time for one more quick question. Um, and I'm just going to ask it. It comes from Charlene in Vermont. Um, she said, have the doctor explain what happens to the nerve when you have diabetes. I mean, why do, why do they get neuropathy? That's a great question, and I, I think there's some direct effects on the nerves from high blood sugar, but it's also probably some effects of the very small blood vessels. Um, when we were talking about peripheral artery disease before, that was talking more about the, the larger, the main blood vessels going down to the legs, but we also have these tiny blood vessels that you know give blood and nutrients to the nerves. So I think it's the effects of the blood sugar on the nerves themselves and on the tiny micro blood vessels that are servicing the nerves. Great, thank you. So if you could come up with three important points for people to take home today, what would those three mm -hmm. points be? So number one is that you should be getting up and moving every day, trying to do something physically active. Um, number two would be that you should avoid tobacco smoking because that will, will definitely make diabetic nerve problems and just diabetes problems worse in general. And in, in terms of a, a third thing, um, I think that it's, that there's, there's not a cure for diabetic nerve problems, and so we really want to try and go with prevention. We want to try and prevent nerve problems from getting worse, try to prevent people with diabetes from developing nerve problems before they start. Thank you. And thank you for all of the great questions. We still have a load of them. We obviously need to bring this topic back and, and Dr. Russ back to answer some more questions because we still have a, a lot of them left, but we're out of time. Um, please stay on the I would line be happy for our to. survey to help us. With oh, that would be great. Please stay on the line for our survey to help us with future planning for our events. Driving with Diabetes takes a team, and we're here to support you. Special thanks to Dr. Tim Russ. I am Carla Cox, and on behalf of the ADA team, we want to thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to connecting with you at our next event. If you have any questions about this event, please email askada at diabetes.org, include Ask the Experts Q&A in your subject line, and thank you for joining ATA today. And now we are going to our survey. Thank you for participating in the American Diabetes Association Ask the Experts event. We hope that you benefited from your experience. Please stay on the line to complete a survey about the event. Your valuable feedback is essential for us to reach our program goals and improve future events. All responses will remain confidential. Question one, please rate the extent to which you felt the event met your expectations. Four, did not meet my expectations, press one. For somewhat met my expectations, press two. For moderately met my expectations, press three. For met my expectations, press four. And for exceeded my expectations, press five. That question again, please rate the extent to which you felt the event met your expectations. For did not meet my expectations, press one. For somewhat met my expectations, press two. For moderately met my expectations, press three. For met my expectations, press four. And for exceeded my expectations, press five. If you feel you could use some support for managing your diabetes, check out the Living with Diabetes program where you can receive information through email and e-booklets 
with tips on eating, physical fitness, and emotional health. Check out our registration page, diabetes.org forward slash experts. All right, question number two. After attending this event, do you plan to attend a future Ask the Experts event? Press, for yes, press one. For no, press two. For not sure, press three. Again, question number two. After attending this event, do you plan to attend a future Ask the Experts event? For yes, press one. For no, press two. And for not sure, press three. Persons with diabetes are at higher risk for retinopathy than those without diabetes. Make sure to have your annual eye exam. Early detection can save your vision. Question number three. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. By attending the event, I gain knowledge on the presented topic. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Again, question number three. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. By attending the event, I gain knowledge on the presented topic. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. You can find delicious and healthy recipes and menus to enhance your eating. Check out the website, www.diabetesfoodhub.org. All right, question number four. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. The knowledge I gained is relevant to my loved one's diabetes. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. And again, question number four. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. The knowledge I gained is relevant to my, my loved one's diabetes. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Did you know that there are approximately 37 million Americans with diabetes? You are certainly not alone. Okay, we'll go on to question five. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. I feel confident that I can apply the knowledge I gain to help manage my, my loved one's diabetes. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Again, question number five. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. I feel confident that I can apply the knowledge I gain to help manage my, my loved one's diabetes. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Check out the heart disease risk calculator at https colon forward slash forward slash www.cvriskcalculator.com and discover if you are at risk for heart disease. We go on to question six. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. I intend to use the knowledge I gained in a new or future appointment with my healthcare professional. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Again, question number six. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. I intend to use the knowledge I gained in a new or future appointment with a healthcare professional. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Did you know that there are approximately 250,000 persons in the United States with kidney failure related to diabetes? Talk with your healthcare provider about your risk. Get tested and prevent kidney disease. Okay, on to question seven. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. 
Attending this event promoted my feeling of belonging and community. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Again, question number seven. Please rate your agreement with the following statement. Attending this event promoted my feelings of belonging and community. For disagree, press one. For somewhat disagree, press two. For neither agree nor disagree, press three. For somewhat agree, press four. And for agree, press five. Diabetes education programs provide services that focus on your concerns about diabetes and will empower you with the knowledge and skills to manage your diabetes. You can find a program near you by checking out the website, diabetes.org forward slash experts. Okay, question number eight. Before participating in this event, how confident did you feel speaking with a healthcare professional about your or your loved one's increased risk for heart disease and stroke? For not at all confident, press one. For not very confident, press two. For neutral, press three. For somewhat confident, press four. For very confident, press five. Again, question number eight. Before participating in this event, how confident did you feel speaking with a healthcare professional about your your loved one's increased risk for heart disease and stroke? For not at all confident, press one. For not very confident, press two. For neutral, press three. For somewhat confident, press four. And for very confident, press five. Keeping your glucose within target range of 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter, 70% or more of the time, is the international recommendation for diabetes management. Consider asking your provider about getting a continuous glucose monitor to help you manage and monitor your glucose. Okay, we're getting close to the end of our survey. Question number nine. After participating in this event, how confident did you now feel speaking with a healthcare professional about your your loved one's increased risk for heart disease and stroke? For not at all confident, press one. For not very confident, press two. For neutral, press three. For somewhat confident, press four. And for very confident, press five. Question number nine again. After participating in this event, how confident do you feel speaking with a healthcare professional about your your loved one's increased risk for heart disease and stroke? Confident, press one. For not very confident, press two. For neutral, press three. For somewhat confident, press four. And for very confident, press five. Physical activity is an important part of reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease and promotes psychological well-being. If you are finding movement challenging due to injuries or chronic pain, ask for a referral to a physical therapist to work with you to find a program that works best for you. Okay, now to a couple of short questions. We strive to create a program and services that represent the full diversity of ADA communities. We are asking the following questions about demographics to ensure that we are meeting this goal. For gender, please select which of the following best describes you. For a woman, press one. For man, press two. For non-binary, press three. And for prefer not to answer, press four. Again, Please select which of the following best describes you. For women, press one. For man, press two. For non-binary, press three. And for prefer not to answer, press four. By not using tobacco products, maintaining glucose, blood pressure, and lipids within target levels, you can reduce your risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Say about the generation. Please select which of the following best describes you. For the silent generation born between 1928 and 1945, press 1. For boomer born between 1946 and 1964, press 2. For generation X born between 1965 and 1980, press 3. For millennial born between 1981 and 1996, press 4. For generation Z born between 1997 and 2012, press 5. For prefer not to answer, press 6. Again, please select which of the following best describes you. For silent, born between 1928 and 1945, press 1. For boomer, born between 1946 and 1964, press 2. For generation X, born between 1965 and 1980, press 3. For millennial, born between 1981 and 1996, press 4. 
For Generation Z, born between 1997 and 2012, press 5. And if you prefer not to answer, press 6. We hope you enjoyed this Ask the Experts program, and we'll join us again next month for another session with an expert. Check out our schedule on diabetes.org forward slash experts. Okay, just one more question, race and ethnicity. Please select which of the following best describes you. For African American or Black, press 1. For American Indian or Alaska Native, press 2. For Asian or Asian American, press 3. For Hispanic, Hispanic, Latinx, or Spanish origin, press 4. For Middle Eastern or North African, press 5. For Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, press 6. For White, press 7. And for Prefer Not to Answer, press 8. Once again, please select which of the following best describes you. For African American or Black, press 1. For American Indian or Alaskan Native, Native, press 2. For Asian or Asian American, press 3. For Hispanic, Latinx, or Spanish origin, press 4. For Middle Easterner or North African, press 5. For Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, press 6. For White, press 7. And for Prefer Not to Answer, press 8. Thank you so much for answering these questions. Please join us again at a future Ask the Experts event to learn more. Go to diabetes.org forward slash experts. Again, that is diabetes.org forward slash experts.